Hey guys, welcome to another video and as you can see there is a lot here in front of you. This is pretty much all my spear fishing gear and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about what you need for spear fishing and some pros and cons about the gear that I have. Because if you've ever been to a dive shop you'll notice how much gear there is. Uh, from all the different kinds of fins, to the floats, to the spear guns, to the vests, etc, etc. So, I've been spearing now for about a year. And I'm at that kind of stage where I brought kind of medium quality gear for the most part. Some higher end gear for some other bits and pieces. And I'm, I'm in that, that kind of period right now where I'm going to start to upgrade things as I've kind of use bits and pieces here and there and kind of notice the pros and cons for me and why I want to change things so we'll get started we'll go from from the uh, from the fins here and we'll work our way across so over here I've got my over stingray fins I've made a whole separate video about these so I won't, won't go into uh, too much details uh, about these fins but what I can say is they are absolutely great fins these are one of the items where I spend a little bit more money and got some good quality fins you can get the blades with the carbon fiber if you really really want to get the higher end uh, or the, the higher end version of these but for the most part the plastic definitely does the job especially for spear fishing when you're going off rocks if purely for free diving competition that kind of stuff then maybe the carbon blades are something you might be interested in but for around 150 200 dollars you really can't go wrong with these they've got great reviews and having used them for quite a while now i can say these are definitely a good investment and something you'll have for a long time and you won't feel the need to upgrade because they do a great job now moving along we have here a uh, the line which i use from the gun over to my float this is definitely a must have for safety, especially when spearing in Australia. I spear off the east coast, so there is a danger of sharks. There are sharks out and about, but it's not a massive concern. But it's always good, not only to have a float, which I'll go into next, but this is mainly to have that, uh, when you catch that fish, to put the fish on the line and send it off the float. So this is 15 meters. It's a nice nice uh, distance you can get 10 meter 20 meter lines etc I find 15 meters quite good for me and it keeps the fish away from me keeps the float reasonably close and allows and gives me plenty of line to actually dive as well so I've got a 15 meter line over here you can get the fancy uh, plastic ones which are a lot smoother and a lot easier this is definitely down the cheaper end of the scale but for me, it does quite well. I don't really have a need to upgrade. If I had lots of disposable income, sure, why not? But when you're starting, or even when you've been doing it for a little while, this more than does the job. It's got no real wear and tear on it, even though it's been used heavily. Uh, I'm very happy with it. Now, the float. Okay, so I've got this float here. I don't have the inside bladder of the float because that's actually something I'm trying to fix now. Uh, this is a blow up float, so pros and cons. Number one, the uh, pros, it can obviously fold up quite small, doesn't take up a lot of room in the pack, easy to set up, um, it does the job quite well, nice and visible, nice and large, nice and light in your pack. Cons, well, the first con, easiest con to solve, is because it is a float, you'll notice in the water, it can tend to float upside down or on its side or you know, so it, it is a little bit tricky to get it to float uh, up way, uh, more upright uh, without anything, but it is an easy problem to solve. I was in Kmart, they were selling sinkers for like a dollar or two, so I just brought a pack of sinkers. I've got the top end stapled. When I blow up the float, I just simply put them on here and uh, it stays upright like so. I mean, I guess you can do the same thing with rocks. I was just at Kmart at the time and I mean, these were so cheap, I thought, why not? That solves that problem. The bigger problem I have with this and the reason I'm upgrading is that even though it's kind of reasonably tough, it still get, gets uh, holes in it quite easily. So I've got holes down the bottom here. I've also got another hole or two around here. There's another one. And um, I guess that's, I don't deliberately drag it over rocks, but every now and then it does hit rocks and it's actually punctured the inside bladder. 
not to the point where it doesn't stay afloat, but to the point where it kind of looks like this. So there's not that much air in there. And that's one of the reasons why I'm actually going to be upgrading to a, a hard plastic buoy in the next week or two. Good way to start. A lot of spearfishers use them. But now that I kind of go spearing that little bit more often, and I know it's something that I like to do, I'm going to be getting uh, a hard plastic buoy type float just because I think it's uh, it's a little bit easier. I mean, especially if you're going every couple of days having to blow this up, take it down, it becomes a bit of a pain in the ass. But again, more so because of the, uh, the longevity float. This thing's lasted me about a year, about 10 months, which is not too bad. But if I can get a, one of the hard plastic floats, I know I'll have that for a couple of years. They're not super cheap, but um, this is this was only about 50 bucks, the hard plastic float from my dive shop with uh, a bunch of safety gear on it, the flag, the weight, the whistle, the mirror will cost me about 100 bucks, so about twice as much. But I'm definitely expecting to get twice uh, as much use out of it. For, I'm expecting to have it for definitely more than two years, so I think it'll be a worthwhile upgrade. Um, let's move on over here. We've got socks and we've got gloves before we move on to the wetsuit. Definitely get a good pair of dive socks. Uh, I think these are two or three mil, so they not only keep your feet warm, I hate having cold feet, but they also make wearing the fins uh, a lot more comfortable, reduce any blisters or wear and tear on your feet, your ankles. So. Go into your dive store and try on a few pairs of socks. You won't need anything more really than two to three mil, especially here on the east coast of Australia. But I definitely recommend getting a pair of socks and not diving without them. I kick myself every time I pick up my socks. Thankfully, thankfully I've only done it twice. Um, gloves wise, I've got the Torelli gloves here. Uh, they're the ones with the Kevlar a little bit thicker, but especially if you're going down looking underneath rocks and all that kind of stuff I definitely like the extra protection these uh, offer my friends use I think they've got Torelli's as well I'm not too sure but the slightly thinner ones a little bit more dexterity in the glove but you know what I, I haven't had any uh, problems with catching fish with having to put them through on the line or anything like that and uh, once again I, I do like the uh, extra protection of the Kevlar I definitely don't get a um, spiked or anything like that from their fish rower as my friends have before so lots of different gloves out there definitely make sure you try them on because again different manufacturers work differently with the uh, with the size of the glove but uh, it's up to you what you get uh, these are uh, hold up pretty well it's a pretty disposable item I actually didn't think they would last this long so they've done quite well uh, let's move over here towards the dive knife. I don't remember what brand this is. It is uh, a little bit fancier. Stainless steel, some knife from uh, Italy. You can see it's not a very big knife. I really don't understand people, uh, especially spearfishers, going around with massive dive knives. I mean, it's unless you're out there in, uh, in the deep water, offshore, uh, I, even then, do you really need such a big knife? I mean. This is nice, small, easy, easy enough to once you spear the fish to to kill it and make any cuts to rope or whatever you have to do. It's got one side, it's got the blade, and then obviously it's got the serrated on the uh, on the other side. Good quality, nice stainless steel, uh, fits well in the hand, uh, easy access, goes around my calf. Again, it's one of those items where I really recommend you you don't dive without one, just in case you're rope gets tangled or you know even for humane sake if you spear a fish in it and you don't get a nice clean shot then you, you do need to kill it quickly put it out of its uh out of its misery so carrying a knife just to be able to do that job is definitely worthwhile and again why carry something big when you only need something nice small and razor sharp we'll move over up here towards my dive mask i've got a hollis m1 um this is just a mask which is, I've just got one side undone for now. This is just a mask which uh, in the store, it just fit me really well. Once again with masks, it's one of those individual things like with gloves. There are uh, definitely better masks out there and worse masks out there. But uh, at the end of the day, it's what's going to fit you the best and be most comfortable. I like this one as well because it's got nice wide lenses, easy to see. lets plenty of light in 
and um, once again it just fit me really well a nice comfortable mask and I've uh, really enjoyed using it snorkel I've got actually uh, three or four snorkels this is just a random one I picked out of my bag probably my worst one this is just like a generic one I brought from um, Big W but I've got slightly better ones I've got ones here without the uh, what's the right word for it the valve down the bottom which I use every now and then especially if it's quite calm but I've got a slightly better quality one with a good valve down the bottom here when it's a little bit rougher and it's also got a splash cover so I mean snorkel is something you're going to be using a lot uh, while well, out <laughs> spear fishing obviously and um, it's a real pain if water keeps getting in there so the splash cover and the valve down the bottom definitely pay off if you spend a little bit more and get a slightly better quality one Let's go on to the wetsuit. I've got a Torelli Open Cell um, 3 mil wetsuit here, two piece. So you've got the bottom half here and you've got the top half here. Because it's an open side, I don't have it here with me, but you do need to lube up before you put this on. Uh, but once you do that, it goes on real quick, real easy, extremely comfortable, very easy to move in. Uh, you've got padding here on the knees. Um, you've got here. Uh, uh, padding on the chest to help load the spear gun. There should be padding oh, here on the back, on the beaver tail, where it goes around your bottom as well. So it's a pretty good suit. Definitely recommend if you're spearing or free diving, it's something that you're doing a lot of. Get a proper open cell wetsuit rather than kind of the surfing suit. Much more comfortable and uh, keeps you really warm. I mean, it's pretty much watertight. It works on a slightly different principle than your traditional wetsuit. A little bit dearer. Uh, you're looking about 300 bucks plus for something quite decent. Uh, you can find them for about 250, but it's one of those items where I would not recommend skimping out on, just because if you're cold and miserable, it's yeah, if you're cold, it's just going to be a miserable dive trip, and you're not going to be able to spend long in the water. Next up, we have a dive belt. So pretty standard belt. I have a Picasso, I think it is. Yeah, Picasso, so you can get like this, the uh, the rubber belt, or you can get material ones. The advantage of a rubber one is that once you're diving deeper and everything starts compressing, the rubber also compresses, whereas material, as everything gets a little bit tighter, the material doesn't compress, so it kind of gets a little bit looser on your body. Uh, I've got four one kilo weights on there. That's something that suits me really well. Again, this is going to be something completely custom to you. The people at the dive shop should be able to offer you some advice. Definitely start on the lower end and if it is a little bit rougher, definitely take one off. I'll go with three if the water's quite rough, but generally I use four. My spear gun here is another thing I will be upgrading in the near future. Torelli Hunter 100, so a nice spear gun to kind of get you started in spear fishing. Um, not too much to say about this gun. You're looking at about 300 bucks. This is they don't make this model anymore, but Torelli is quite a good brand. You can see I've got my um, wetsuit and my gloves. I think they were Torelli as well. So not a bad gun. Kind of the upper mid-range level gun. I'll be upgrading to a Omar or a Rabitek Stealth Pro at this stage. I think I'm leaning towards the Rabitek Stealth Pro, but um. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely had its uh, abuse, its wear and tear, and it's um, held up quite well. Just make sure, with all your gear, because you're diving out in um, salt water, you give it a really good clean. The best way i found to clean all the gear is fill up your bathtub, and just go through the bathtub. So I'll do my, do my um, wetsuit first, because I really want the cleanest water for that, and I'll kind of work through the fins, the gloves, the knife, the mask, the float, everything through the bathtub, and then just uh, hang it out to dry, rather than hosing it all down, which becomes a pain in the ass. I think in the bathtub, it's really the easiest way to wash. Cool, well this is pretty much all my spear fishing gear, minus the uh, the bag I carry it in, and um, like I mentioned, the, the loop for the wetsuit. Guys, if you have any questions, um, leave them below. To give you an idea of cost, that is about, give or take $1,500 worth of gear there, and like I mentioned, it's all kind of mid-range at the moment. Float or fins, definitely kind of decent mid-range. Um, fins, the floats a bit lower range. The glove and the socks are, are quite good. 
the wetsuit again quite good the dive belt's quite good again the rubber the knife's quite good so at least the gun's kind of mid-range and uh, the mask's not too bad either don't spend too much you can definitely spend uh, almost a grand on the gun by itself but um kind of go the mid-range because if you buy the cheap stuff you know spearing and free diving is one of those things where if you cheap out it's going to be miserable because you're going to be cold things are going to be breaking and it's it's not something you want when you're uh, out in the open water sweet well thanks for watching hope you guys got something out of it this has been my video about my spearfishing gear